Hi, my name is Benjamin. Um, this is a little experiment. I try, I try to start a vlog for our channel, Hidden Empires. I'm part of the team. And the idea is to upload videos more regularly. So we make those vlogs. Those are unscripted. Um, just take, talk about stuff, about ants uh, that doesn't make it into our videos. And the quality is not the same quality, of course. We don't try to achieve the same quality with the main videos. And also the voice is different, you know, my, the voice in the main videos is my sister-in-law and, well, English is her mother tongue. Um, it's not my mother tongue though, as you probably can hear, and I hope you are okay with my accent. I try to do my best to speak proper English. Well, anyway, this is our first vlog and um, the reasons why I want to make this vlog, I want to show it on my computer here. Um, all right, here we go. That's the weather forecast for the next few days here in, the, here in Switzerland, here in the city I live in, Biel. I live in Biel, that's, that's the city here. Um, and the weather forecast, as you can see, uh, we had, those, this is the kind of days, you know, this day here, that's the kind of days we had the last few days. It was around 20, somewhere between 20 and 25 degrees. Um, we had sometimes we had rain and stuff. It was not too hot for this time of the year, and now there's a weather change going on, as you can see. Um, going on here, you know, it's getting hotter. Starting by tomorrow, uh, on Monday it will be 31 degrees Celsius, and on Tuesday 34, and on Wednesday it will be really hot. Thursday, it's uh, 36 degrees Celsius. Um, for all American people, that's like 97 degrees Fahrenheit, if I'm correct. I hope I'm correct. And this is, this is really hot for Switzerland. Uh, I don't know where you're from. There, maybe you are from a place where this is just normal in summer. But uh, in Switzerland, especially in June, this is really, really hot. And um, when, I've se when I've seen this weather forecast, um, I immediately thought, yeah, that, that's going to be nuptial flight time. You know, here in, the, in those those days, starting on Tuesday, maybe already on Monday, uh, we'll have, I'm absolutely sure we'll have a lot of nuptial flights, with a lot of queen ants flying around. And um, that's that's just past experience. When you have things like that, you know, when, when you have cold temperatures and all of a sudden the temperatures rise to really, to a hot heat wave and it's getting really hot, that's the time when when the ants fly and I have some, you know, uh, what I'm talking about, this is some footage I took last year and I played. Um, also at a, a similar time period, you know, it was, I think it was also in, at the end of June or maybe in the beginning of July and it was also during really hot days and we had multiple nuptial flights during those days and uh, different species were flying. So that's what I'm looking forward. Uh, so if you live in Central Europe, um, get ready to find some queens if you want. If you want to go and get into ant keeping, or if you're already into ant keeping. Now, one thing that I always, or that's the main thing I want to talk about tonight. Um, one thing a lot of people tell me is that you know it's not really they, they don't expect nuptial flights in these days because uh, it, it's going to be dry, right? We have some rain now. But humidity will drop in those days, and you know, from Sunday to Monday, it will drop. Uh, it will drop. And one thing you always hear, you know, um, amongst ant, ant keepers is that uh, the nuptial flights will be when when there's high humidity levels. And that's something that just doesn't it doesn't match my experience, to be honest. Uh, at least not here in Switzerland. I when I, when I get got into ant keeping, I listen to all these tutorials I, I, I surfed on the internet and every everybody told me you know you have to go after rainfall you know when when it was raining a thunderstorm or something like that and the next day it's sunny again then you have to go because you have high humidity levels and you have high temperatures and that's the, the time when the ants fly when it's nuptial flight time and I went out every time every time we had a thunderstorm and the next day it was sunny again and I hardly could find anything but I uh, realized very soon that uh, on those kind of days, you know, those really hot days, where they very often had low humidity, uh, on those really hot days, uh, there were a ton of nuptial flights going on. Where does this, this 
this belief come from that you need high humidity uh, for nuptial flights and why doesn't why is my experience so different you know why why was it always different here in Switzerland um, the thing is I haven't really seen any studies yet that 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 tell us that you need high humidity for nuptial flights uh, actually it's the opposite you know uh, I've read few, through a couple of studies about um, about nuptial flights and I want to show you a couple of things you know this is one an, a very old study made in in the Netherlands 1981 I think and um, and those uh, those are results uh, from from well they, they they studied what the weather conditions were with the nuptial flights with three uh, four different uh, species of ants, you can see the species up here, and um, and you have the temperatures, you have uh, relative humidity, and and that's something you know. Um, if you see the humidity levels here, you know the, the nuptial flights were the humidity levels were between forty two percent and seventy percent, forty five uh, forty five and si between forty five and sixty nine percent, and. Uh, Carubra, for example, 55 to 87 percent was a little higher here, and, and those numbers are interesting if you compare them with uh, with the average humidity in, in, in the Netherlands in, in, in the area of Amsterdam where these measurements have been made. As you can see, average humidity is quite high actually. It's uh, in, in summer or the lowest is in May, 76 percent. But those nuptial flights are. Are in summer and you know it's 78 percent 79 percent 80 percent 83 percent and so on and uh, those are are the average numbers right and if we have these numbers uh, they are significant they are lower than that you know so significantly lower actually well here there are some exceptions but uh, also you know Mermica Rupa also flew on with 55 percent which is uh, humidity which is much lower than the average and as a second study I want to show you, um, this one is a little bit different because it's just one species. This study was made, let me check it out. Um, I need to find the right one second, I'll find it. Um, this was made in Poland, and I think in 2006. This is a study from 2006 was made. At the University of Silesia, um, I, I can't really spell the name of the, the author, but um, this is very interesting as well. You know, um, if you look at it, um, the results. You know, this is temperatures, uh, and that, that's where the nuptial flights happen, right here. Here, as you can see, it's it's when when temperatures peaked, nuptial flights happened, right? So uh, there's certainly a um, correlation between temperature and, and nuptial flights, but uh, if you go down to the, the graphic, which is unfortunately a little bit poorly made because uh, the, the the numbers don't really match the columns, but uh, here's the humidity level, right? And uh, and as you can see, on nuptial flights in 2004, days with flight, the, the, the average humidity was 61%. On days without nuptial flights, the average humidity was 69%. Here you can see uh, in 2005, average humidity was 62% with when there were nuptial flights and 68% where there were no nuptial flights. And in 2006, average humidity levels were 51% when there were nuptial flights and 69% when there were no nuptial flights. So all those studies suggest that actually uh, days with low humidity um, are very good days for nuptial flights. So why is everyone telling the, the, the opposite, you know? And my theory is that, you know, all those studies have been made in temperate climate zones and Switzerland is also a temperate climate zone. Um, my theory is that it's different when you go to very dry areas, you know, um, climate zones where it's much drier than here in Switzerland, where average humidity is lower, then it would make sense that, that uh, ants would fly at days with higher humidity, um, so they can dig, uh, they, it's easier for them to dig, uh, to get underground. 
because of the grounds where it rides, it's hard for them to dig. But it, at least here in Switzerland, it seems to be the opposite. So if you have weather like this, you know, if you have weather conditions like this, like the, the one we've seen before, um, let's go back here. If you have something like this, you should really try to get out and try to find those queens. That's actually all I'm trying to say. Don't uh, pay too much attention to humidity. I believe wind has some uh, some effect as well. You know, if there's much wind, uh, more wind, then then there probably are fewer nuptial flights. But um, at the end, you know, especially in summer. Uh, make your own experience, you know, because every region is a little bit different, every species is different. Um, go out as often as possible. If, you, or if you're looking for a queen, go out as, as often as possible and uh, um, go on, hu on days with high humidity, on days with low humidity, on warm days, on colder days. Just try to find when, when, you can, when can you find your queens and get your, make, um, yeah, get your own experience. And that's what I'm basically trying to tell you. In summertime, it's just, you know, every time I go out, I always have a little container with me, something like that. It's always, I always have it with me. Uh, even if, if I'm not looking for ants, just have something with me in just in case. Anyway, uh, I think I talked a lot now. All right, if you like this vlog, uh, please leave a like and tell us. Uh, if you don't like it, you can tell us as well. Uh, I'm well aware that the quality of this vlog is much lower than we usually do, but it's we can do it more regularly, you know, it's easy to make. I can make it my, by myself, I don't need the whole team, it's actually just me doing it right now. And um, so we could upload more regularly. Of course, we'll keep on working on the main videos and keep them coming as well. But uh, this is just an experiment. If it works out, if you, if you guys like it, we'll continue doing them or I continue doing them. And if you don't, then we'll stop again. So please subscribe if you haven't yet and share your thoughts, share your comments. If you have questions, a vlog is perfect for, for answering questions. If you have questions about ant keeping or ants in general, uh, please write us a comment and hear you next time. Thank you.